How do you deal with um, negativity and stress, especially in a face fast-paced environment such as the music industry do you have a um routine to clear your mind or oh wow that's dope that you asked me that well to be honest with you how i deal with stress is i pray go to church you know god you know and having positive people around me i have a couple people i you know i talk to and just to give me advice everybody needs somebody to talk to you know just uh and I was reading this book. <clears throat> Actually, I think I got it. It's in my phone. My yeah, that'd be great. I need a good book. Yeah. It's a book. So is, is that something you read regularly? or? Yeah, I was reading it pretty regularly in the beginning of the year. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, <laughs> I haven't. It's called Manifest Now. And it got this, uh, this, this part in the book where it talks about affirmations, like in the morning. Um, just having a routine as far as like just making your bed, drinking your tea, looking in the mirror, you know, actually talk, having a real conversation with yourself, you know, and um, that helped me out a lot. And then I was reading this book by T.D. Jakes called Emotions, just about dealing with, you know, as a man, dealing with certain situations and just growing. And um, that mixed in with playing basketball, working out. I got my, my guy he from Chicago. He's my trainer. He with me. He not re- he a good trainer, but I just, there's one thing I gotta say. He eats French toast every morning, <laughs> right? And I'm like, how are you my trainer? And you, I'm trying to get myself together, and you eating French toast, right? So, but no, just working out and playing basketball. I do a, a few things, you know. That's why he wasn't complaining when we're walking up the stairs. No, that's that's crazy. Like it's, it's like throwing it in my face, right? <laughs> but no, just, you know, it's a multitude of things. You know, I, I've been going, in the, I get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, try to go to the gym, like, you know, at least four times a week, play basketball, get into my reading, talking to, you know, different people. I mean, I'm up every morning at, like, six thirty, seven o'clock, you know, because I like getting my me time in early in the day because during the day, you know, things just be moving around. Definitely. So many things just happen. You just gotta. You never know what you gotta do, you know. So I try to get that me time in. And you it's talked really... about talking, talking to other people, and like having a mentor. Yeah. How 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 does it work usually? Because I hear different stuff. Do you pick the mentor, or does the mentor pick you? The mentor picks you. <laughs> nah, I mean, I got a couple mentors. Uh, like I, I spoke on like DJ Tom, um, and everybody that's my mentor is not music related. You know, just you know, guys that I grew up, you know, admiring and just they got a lot of knowledge and I just like talk to them. But it's not you don't want to talk to too many people because you don't want everybody know your, yeah. your business. But it's like I got like one or two guys I talk to. And, um, that's it. And in general, um, what inspires your work? Like it can be a thing, a memory or a person. What usually inspires your work? What inspires my work is my childhood because... I just, anything from my childhood I remember is because of music. You know, like I remember when I was five years old listening to Michael Jackson or sneaking listening to Public Enemy with my pops and stuff like that. So just to just have that feeling that it, that's, when I work on, the, work on music, that's when I feel more comfortable and I'm able to relate, you know. So I'm just inspired by just being able to do that and just getting people reaction like, I'm like a fan. So like I'm more nervous than the artists when they drop when they like the release date. I'm like, oh sh-. I'm up all day looking at Twitter, Apple Music, and seeing what people say. Like, I remember um funny story. I got a friend that worked at this uh <clears throat> at Hip Hop DX and um Playboy Cardi first album came out. Everybody was liking it, right? And um the guy wrote a, a bad article about it, right? But this is like my friend, like, and he said something I wasn't really agreeing with. So um, I was at the office and I was just going, you know, like, tripping out, talking to the, like the project manager and everything. Like, man, I can't believe this. I, I was talking to Joey, all types of people about the situation. It's like, man, you can't do that, man. This, is, this happens all the time. I'm like, all right, cool, cool. So I went to a GEZ party. It was like his birthday party like two years ago. And I seen my friend. He's like, man, what's up, man? 
I was like, nah, man, ain't no what's up, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I, tr- I like really tripped out on him, right? He was like, man, this is the music business. I'm like, nah, man. He's like, you act like you writing the raps. I'm like, I'm not, but it's just, that's my baby, dog. <laughs> but no, nah, I just like, the music, bro, like, I really love it. Yeah, you love, love it. it so much. Dog. Yeah, I'm a nerd when it comes to music. I can talk to you about anything like when it comes to music. So. I just love music, man. That's I'm inspired just because I'm able to do it, you know. And how do you usually spot talent? Like, what's the main thing that you usually look for? A uh, it factor, like. Is it the voice? Is it the personality? Is it the p- professionalism? What's like the key thing that you look for? It's a multitude of different things. Each artist is different. You know, like with Cardi, when I met him, I didn't even know he rapped. I just thought he was cool. I was with Rocky, was in the studio, and he just kept saying like crazy stuff. And but he was fly. And I was like, man. I was like, what you do? He's like, man, I rap. And then Southside, he's like, yeah, that's the kid that got the what song. I'm like, oh. And he's like, yeah, you, know, you need to sign him. I, I didn't understand shit he was saying, though. So, But he was just so, like, it was something about him, you know. And um, I spent a lot of time hanging with him, and he just he just, he just, just was a star. And then with Juice World, um, I went to the studio with him, and they were playing a song. He was in the booth, they was playing a song, what I thought they was playing a song, but it was really him just going straight off the top. He didn't mess up one time. It was just so effortlessly, you know, and, and he did like three, four songs that night, and his talent just, it just cut through. You know, um, I like spending time with my artists before I sign them, because, you know, a lot of people like signing artists based on numbers, but I, I mean, that's good, you know, because you do want to sign deals that's competitive, it is a business, but... For me, I like signing things that I kind of I gotta want to be you. You know, I, I, I you know I want to want you to be able to be the best in your world. Whether you the best lyricist, whether you the best dress, whether you the best, um, you know, with the melodies, you know, and also, you know, this this the entertainment business. You got people want to be entertained. You don't want to just have a dry artist because you can just have good music, but nobody cares about you. Right. You know, nobody want to hear what you got to say. Exactly. You know. It's a multitude of different things, you know. Especially since you mentioned you get more excited than they get when yeah. an album release or something is coming on. It really sounds like the number one requirement for you is the personality. Mm-hmm. But do you think um, hard work uh, beats talent mm-hmm. if you think about an artist? I mean, that's the right thing to say. I mean, of course you want somebody to work hard, but you got some artists that don't record a lot of songs, but the songs they record is just the it's just crazy, like, and you got some artists that record so much, you're going like, all right, I'm going to get one, and uh, two, three hits out of this, you know? So it, it just really depends, you know? You, of course, you got to have a mind state of willing to work, you know what I'm saying? You just, you know, but some people just have it, you know? Some people just do it, and it's just, it's just a God's gift, you know? It's just a talent, you know? So it it really depends. I mean, it's the right thing to say hard work be talent, but, you know, you know Allen Iverson, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, that's a really right? good example. He was like, like practice, like he didn't win the championship, but he is one of the greatest players. You know, it depends. You know. Yeah. yeah. Can we say he's one of the best point guards ever? We definitely can. So uh, you no, know, man, Allen Iverson is in my top three favorite basketball players of all time. That, that's a fair statement. And he had the best braids ever. <laughs> oh yeah. Quiet, like, quiet, Leonard, like. Nah, bro. No, it was a trend. <laughs> Literally, every kid in school and everyone was doing the same braids. Yeah, I I have a, a hair challenge. Like I I can't really grow, no, so I never got to get into the braids. Yeah, my hair don't grow like I'm bald headed now. So. <laughs> but I I admired them, you know. I admired them. For I did the, the headbands sure. and stuff like that. I could do that. I couldn't really get the braids. Yeah, that yeah. that is it's a really good example about how like talent. If it's really really big talent, you can make it work. 